Hello campers, this is Nate from Christie's RV. Today we're going to be going through this 2001 32TSBH J Flight by Jayco. We'll start up at the front here. Up at the front of your unit, you have two 30 pound propane bottles. In between the two propane bottles, you have a crossover regulator. If both propane bottles are on, whatever way the crossover regulator is pointing, that's the bottle it's gonna draw from. If that bottle runs out of gas, it'll automatically switch itself over to the other bottle so your fridge or furnace won't skip a beat. And then you can just spin the switch over, disconnect this bottle and bring it to get refilled. Just in front of your propane bottles, you have your electric jack. The toggle switch at the top is to make your jack go up and down. And the little one in front of it is just for a light. If your jack ever stops working or you don't have power to your jack for some reason, you can pop the top off here. It does come with a handle so you can insert it there and manually crank it in case you have to do it that way and then just on the passenger side up at the front you have a nice little light coming down the passenger side of the rv you have your pass-through compartment coming down the passenger side in between your slides here, you have the back of your hot water tank. To drain your hot water tank, you always wanna make sure you let the pressure off the system first. You can do that by opening your pressure relief valve at the top of the tank or go inside and open a hot tap. And then you can take your plug out after all the pressure's off. At the top, just beside the back of your hot water tank here, you have your black flush for your black tank. So there's sprayers inside of your tank. So after you empty your sewage, you can plug a pressurized hose in there and it'll spray and clean your tank out for you. Just below that is your city water connection. This is where you would connect the pressurized hose either coming from at a house or at a campground. Just below your city water connection, you have your power cord storage. It just pops in here. And then your cord is a 30 amp cord and it's about 30 feet long. Just beside your power cord storage is your outdoor shower. So if you are hooked up to a hose or you have your pump running, you can come out here and use your shower, just like a normal shower. Just below your shower, you have your outlet for your furnace, your exhaust for your furnace. You just wanna make sure you don't put anything in front of it because the exhaust coming out is very hot. And then just below your furnace exhaust, you have your sewer outlet. This RV does have two gray tanks. The handle on the far right is your gray, so that will be for your sink and your showers. And then the black here will be for your toilet. And then up towards the front of the RV under the slide is your second gray tank that will be just for your kitchen. Coming towards the back of the RV here, you have your spare tire ready to go. Hopefully you never have to use it. Also on the back of your RV, you have your barbecue. To hook up to these barbecues, they have a quick connect for the gas. So to connect, you just push it up into the orifice there, and then you can turn the valve to open same thing on the RV you want to push it in and then just turn the valve when it's in line with the hose that means it's open then you can come to your barbecue and just light it with a barbecue lighter like a normal little camp barbecue coming down the driver's side of the RV into the outdoor kitchen 
you have your cooktop here, your stove top. To light your stove top, you want to just turn it to light and then you can take a lighter and just light the burners. <laughs> just beside your stove top here, you have your sink. Just beside your sink, you have your mini fridge. This is just like a household mini fridge. So you do have to be plugged into 110 for it to work. Coming down the driver's side, you got the back of your fridge. It's not much maintenance you would have to do with your fridge. I would just open it once a year and make sure no critters made nests or anything in there. Just beside your fridge vent, you have your potable water fill. This is where you would fill up before you go on a trip if you want to haul water with you. You can either use a pressurized hose or if you only have a bucket or a funnel, you could use that. And then after you're done hauling the water with you, there's a drain just underneath where you could drain your water out so you're not hauling it all with you and burning all that gas. Just beside the drain, to drain the tank are the two low points. These are the two lowest points of the hot and cold line. So if you ever have to do work in your RV, you can just drain your lines right out there. Just above your potable water fill, there is another hook here. And the other part of it comes with the RV so you can hook a TV outside. Just below that is your outlets for your 110. These outlets are GFI protected, so if moisture gets in there, they will pop and you can just reset them inside the bathroom. And I'll show you that when we get there. And then just beside here is an outlet. So if you're hooked up, you can hook up to here to hook your TV outside to get your channels. And let's head inside. So first thing you notice when you come inside the RV, is this little door here. When you open it up, up at the top, you have your monitor panel. So this monitor panel will tell you the status of all your tanks and your battery. So if I press the battery one, it says it's full. Your battery will say it's full whenever it's plugged in because your battery is charging whenever your RV is plugged in the shore power. Just beside that is your fresh tank, then black tank, and then your grades tank. One will be for your kitchen, and then two will be for your bathroom. The red buttons just below those ones, the one on the far left will be your water pump. So if you're hauling water with you, you would have to flip this switch on. It'll pressurize the lines and then you can use your sink and shower like normal. The other two are for your hot water heater, electric and propane. So when you want your hot water, you just flip those on and it'll take about a half hour to get your hot water up and going. If you want your hot water to come back faster, you can just piggyback off each other and run them both at the same time. Only thing with this unit is it does have the fireplace too. So because it has the fireplace, you have to pick if you're gonna run your hot water heater off 110 or you're gonna run your fireplace. If you pick to run your, run your fireplace, then you can only run your hot water heater off gas. If you're not using your fireplace, you can run it off both. Just below that are these two switches here. One on the right will be for your lights inside your RV. The one beside it is for the light on your awning. To put your awning out, you just wanna hit the button that says awning, hold it. You wanna hold it till the flap of the awning comes down and then you can let go. If you don't let go, it'll just start rolling itself up backwards. Not a big deal. You can just correct it by hitting the button the other way. These awnings are not made 
for heavy winds or rains so i suggest if you're just going for a four-wheeler ride to put your awning in if you're sitting outside underneath your awning and it starts to sprinkle a bit you can pitch the awning you can just come over and pull the arm down and it'll put a pitch on the awning you just never want to push it back up you can all when you want it back up you just put your awning back in and it'll correct itself and then the button just beside your awning one is for your main slide to put your main slide you just want to push it hold it till it slides all the way out you will hear a ratcheting sound and that just lets you know that you have your slide all the way out just when you come inside the door you have your fire extinguisher here and then your co detector i suggest whenever you go out camping just to be safe there's a little button you can press just to test it, just to make sure it's working. Coming into the kitchen, you got your microwave. Works like any household microwave. You do have to be plugged in the 110 for the microwave to work. Just below that, you have your range hood, just like a household range hood with a fan and a light. Under that, you have your stove and your cooktop. To light your cooktop, you just want to turn it to the flame. And then you can twist the igniter on the left. To light the oven, you want to just go to the one that has a little Fahrenheit symbol, turn it to the flame. You want to hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds and then there is an igniter inside so you can just use the same igniter we used for the top ones to ignite the bottom. Once the pilot's lit then you can pick your temperature and do your cooking. Just beside your oven here, we have your fridge. Your fridge has three settings, has auto, gas, and then just electric. So to turn your fridge on, you wanna just hit the on button here. Then for modes, the A with the power cord will mean that the fridge is on auto. So when the fridge is on auto, when it's plugged in the 110, it will run off shore power. If something happens and your RV gets unplugged or you lose power, it'll automatically switch itself over to gas. When that power is restored, it will switch itself back over to 110 to run off the shore power. If you're out camping and you wanna just run it off gas or strictly electric, you can just press mode again and it will go to just the extension cord. That'll mean you're just running off 110. And if it's unplugged, the fridge will shut off. And then the little water droplet will be gas. So the fridge will be running just on gas. Coming down the hallway into the bathroom here. If anything ever happens and you have to get to your plumbing behind your shower, there is this nice door here that you can access your hot and cold line and your P-trap. This is where the GFI is located. So if your plug outside ever stops working, you can come in here and the little red light will be on and you can reset your GFI. And then just on the right, when you come in the door, you have your light switch. And then there's a switch up at the fan. Turn your fan on. Coming down the hallway here, you have your two buttons for your two slides. They work just like the other one. Just want to push it, hold it till you hear the ratcheting. Then you know your slides all the way out. Just below those two, we have your thermostat. So to turn your thermostat on, you just want to hit the power button. First one that will come up is fan. I suggest just keep the fan on auto. If the fan is set on anything but auto, when you turn your furnace on, your air conditioner fan will come on too to help circulate air so i find it easier just to keep it on auto press it again it'll show you a snowflake that will be your ac so you just flick it to that pick your temperature and your ac will kick on 
and then you press it one more time and it'll go to furnace and then again you can just pick your temperature coming into the back bunk room here you have another hookup for a TV here your 110 and then your cable hookup You got the good old J-cubes, lights inside the bunks. Then coming out of the main area, you got your dinette and your sofa. Just above your sofa and your dinette here, you have your fire alarm. Works like any household fire alarm. I suggest just pressing the button and testing it whenever you go out to make sure it's working. Just below your TV here, you have your stereo. So to turn your stereo on, you have your power button. There are speakers located inside the awning. So the one will be your inside, and then two will be your outside speakers inside your awning. Coming into the bedroom here, you have a fire escape. Hopefully you never have to use it. If you do, you just grab this red handle, push it out. Then you can pull your screen out and hop out. But you can use it just like a normal window. You can just push it out and it'll rest on the little red tab there. You do have a switch for the lights inside the bedroom here. And then you have little ones that you can use by hand to shut off at night. And I think that's about it. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to call us at Christie's RV. Thank you.